Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Z-E-R-C, voice of the people. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Mike Delicio. And I am Z Garcia. Welcome. And also, I'm the people. So, oh, snap. welcome to the Dice Tower. Um, we're doing our top 100 games of all time, which we have done every year. Although, if you look at the numbers, this has confused some of the people keeping stats. Mm-hmm. There is no 2019 technically because we usually did it in september but in 2019 we moved it up to january 2020 oh my <laughs> i know it's one of those times where they put an asterisk at the end of things what a scandal i always put an asterisk at the end of your list anyway tom so don't worry about it it's good ah, oh, snap. trash talking already we <laughs> haven't even started there Same. we go that's right all right so that was okay that wasn't a good pencil anyhow um <laughs> The, uh, so we're getting going here, folks. We're doing our top 100 games of all time. A couple caveats before we start. Um, these are our opinions and only our opinions, blah, blah, blah. But we know that it's kind of funny to say the top 10 100 games of all time, and then it changes to next year. But at this moment, mm-hmm. these are my favorite games to play. Exactly. Yes. Exactly right. But I think there's some interesting stats that could be done here. This is my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16th time doing this. Wow. It is Z's sixth time doing it. It's Roy's second time, although... Kind one of it, one only has the 40 on it, and then uh, mm. I have one from, like, 2017, which has my whole 100. <laughs> and, Mike, I think this is your first time, right? Yeah, I did the top 40 last year with Roy, but this is my first top 100. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear what Mike mm-hmm. has to say. But mostly, in. I'm excited because this is the People's Choice 10th time. Mm-hmm. And I really like the people's choice because it shows what people are interested in right now. Some games stay the same, some games change, but it, you know, some very popular games when they come out fall off this list pretty quickly. And I, I don't know, I just find that fascinating. Mm. Yeah. Alrighty, well we're doing it live, so we better get going because this is 50 games each episode. We're gonna be doing a next one at two o'clock today. And if you're bored while we're doing this, just pop over to <laughs> DiceTowerKickstarter.com and back us, and it will get you back in. I, it makes us more interesting each time you back. <laughs> Is that how it works? Scientific fact. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Here we go. 100. All righty, my number 100 is new to the list for me. It just popped in at the very end, and it came out at the end of 2019. This is my, I guess it's my current favorite Alexander Pfister game. (laughs) It's the only one that made my list. Irritating people all over the world. Um, And that's Maracaibo. Mm. And I have to say, when I first saw this, I did not think it would be my favorite because... The cover is that typical trading in the Mediterranean, actually mm-hmm. trading in the Caribbean, you know, eh. but playing this game, I taught this game a lot this past year at different, at well, not different conventions, at Dice Tower West specifically and on the cruise. And there's just something about it. It's a huge rondelle, which I normally don't like. Mm-hmm. It has almost no theme. It has cards, though, that can be used in various ways and make cool combinations. You can make a spot on the rondelle do something different for you than everybody else. And it just combines to make something that I really enjoy. And Mike needs to play this. I do need to play it. Yeah, you're you're making me even more excited to try it out. So, yeah. It sounds like you don't like this game very much, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Number 100? <laughs> Number 100, that, really? Again, also, for those of you new to this, each of us has played at least a thousand games. Um, oh for sure and so to be in the top 100 is a big deal being 100 does not mean it's bad Uh, i don't even know why i bother saying that people are going to still insist that that's the truth (laughs) garbage (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
All right, for me, my number 100 is a monster smashing game, which I assume will probably be on some other people's list, and that is King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo is a lot of fun as you're rolling dice Yahtzee style, trying to keep specific things and then be able to either gain points or knock the other monsters out. I don't know if Tom has ever played this game and not try to knock all the monsters out, but you know, you can win with victory points. I've done yeah, it before. Uh, um, but, but yeah, so this was actually on my list. Uh, how many years ago was 2017? It seems like an eternity ago, but it was 91 back then, and it's only dropped right. to 100. I still really enjoy this game. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different expansions and add-ons, and don't we have we have one of these in the Kickstarter as well? One of the uh, Rook guys, so you should check that out also. Mm. Um, but yeah, my number 100 is King of Tokyo. Yeah, I nice. don't think this is gonna be on my list. No, it's <gasps> not. I, it. Oh, look, I like it. Just to make the top 100. That's all. Dark edition. Spoilers, Tom. <laughs> The dark edition. That's right. I'm I'm a edgy. Mm -hmm. It's a classic game. I understand. It's not. I'm. Um, we'll see. I'm not going to say one way or the other. I will say what my number one hundred game is, though, because I wouldn't do that to you. My number one hundred game is all about potential. Right. This game has potential to move up the list. It could fall off. This is Marvel United. <laughs> no. This is oh. yes. I thought you were Coming doing gift wrong. Coming out strong with number 100. So Marvel United right now, all that's available is a core set, which has, I don't remember exactly how many uh, heroes and villains. I like that core set quite a bit, but I am really, really excited about what's to come soon with the included, you know, with the uh, expansions, the changes, uh, slight changes it looks like there's going to be to the gameplay. Essentially, it is a cooperative game where you are playing as the Marvel heroes and you are moving around kind of a circular set of cards which make up your board, trying to defeat villains. Um, it's a very clean, simple rule set, uh, but I really like what it does. I like that it's a relatively short game, gets to the point, but I'm so excited about where it might go. So I'm hoping that this is going to be on my list for years to come, even moving higher. That's my number 100, Marvel United. This is exactly why it's not on my list at the moment, mm -hmm. because I think that extra stuff honestly will push it maybe onto the list. I really like it, but there's not enough depth to it now to make top 100 for me. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I love how, uh, how, how Mike is saying that uh, he hopes it's on his list next time. You know, Mike, you can just... Put it on your list now. <laughs> you have control of your destiny. Uh, you bring up a solid point, Z. I'm just saying. All right, my number 100 is a party game, and I want this to set the tone for all of my 100, okay? They are mm -hmm. all going to be basically party games, or I consider them so, and they are all going to be very light. They are mm -hmm. all going to be cooperative as well. My 100 awesome. is one key. One key is uh, one of those uh, post-Dixit-style games in which you are basing information or passing information trying pe to, to get people to decipher things based on imagery alone. And in this one, the group is trying to find the one image based on one player's clues. And they obviously know which one it is. They're trying to give you good clues as to uh, what you should eliminate from the possibilities and settle on the right one. I think it's very breezy. It's uh, it's fun. It gets some good discussion going. I love to, I love playing both sides of it. Being the one that gives the clues, being the one that is part of the conversation. They did some nice things to get neither side of the equation to have a lot of downtime. Both both mm. groups are going to be, ma you know, managing something or setting something up. At the same time, so that you're not sitting there waiting for everybody to be done talking and then be like, okay, is it this one? Yes, it's that one. It took you yeah. six minutes. You know, so I like this one. I think it's a nice one. I, I think it's perhaps, I know some people don't like it because you could just sort of, yeah, you don't <laughs> like it because you could just, it's too nebulous, I guess. It's yes. too easy to just be like, uh, eliminate this one. You're like, no, nope, that's the one you were supposed to guess. Game's over four minutes in. Yes, that's true. But I've always had a good time with it. So my number 100, one key. That's the first time on your list. All right. Number 100 for the people was 138 last year, but 91 the year before that. So it's gotten more popular. And that's because okay. it's the hottest theme in gaming right now. Golems. Oh. Uh, so it's, 
It's Century Golem Edition. Uh, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> I guess it's it's getting into more people's hands. I think if you walk yeah. into a store and you see the two centuries next to each other, at least in America, more people are probably drawn to the brighter colors of, of Golem Edition. In fact, Century Spice Road is not even on the list. I mean, it is. It's at 123. Mm. Right. Gotcha. So, And last year, it was at 71. So they've switched spots, essentially. Interesting. It's interesting, though, that yeah. both games, which are essentially the same game, are within the top 150. I think that says something about the system itself. I wonder how yeah. high it would be if they were combined. It would be... <laughs> Let our powers of gaming... Oh, wait, the game already does combine with its system. Okay, it's confusing. (laughs) Never mind. So 100 for the people, Century Golem Edition. Nice. Number 99 for me is one of those games that's been on my list since the beginning. Although, this is the closest it's come to falling off, I guess. And that is... Uh, well, Trom Fabric is the version I have, but Hollywood mm. Blockbuster is maybe the most well-known version of this. I really like this game. It's one of my favorite Kinesia games. Uh, the idea of bidding, but other people get the money you bid, is something mm-hmm. I wish more auction games do, even though it doesn't make any thematic sense. Right. It's a yeah. fun mechanism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if, if you keep losing auctions, you will eventually mm-hmm. win something. Correct. And then the theme of it, putting different movie stars in the movies and making Bambi, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Uh, That's, of course, with my pay stubs. Um, (laughs) The original one was all 19, 20, 30 movies. And then there's parody ones, which I don't like as much. So Mm. it's one of the few games where I like my pasted up version. Even though my pasted up version is like 15 years old now. (laughs) And there was one that was just released, not in the States. Um, I want to say it was maybe a South American release of this game that has, I think, Audrey Hepburn on the cover. So it's still being it's still being produced out there. Anyway, my number 99, Hollywood Blockbuster. So for my number 99, I have a team game. I really enjoy games that work with teamwork. And this is a real-time game as well. And that is Captain Sonar. This is a game where you have to work together as a team in real time to try to blow up the opponent's sub. There's all sorts of different roles. And it's really fun to play around with those roles, but also try to put together a team that can do really well. Um, I think majority of the times I played this, Emerson was our um, guy who was math- mathing out the paths, and um, that just gave us an unfair advantage with all of that stuff. But uh, it's been a lot of fun playing Captain Ooh. Sonar. I really enjoy the I team aspect not... of that. And uh, I would not it. want to play against Emerson. Let's go, Emerson. Tom. You and me, baby. What, I'm your not everyone baby. knows. Not everyone knows which Emerson we're talking about here. Let's let's. Well, uh, he, he had the number one hundred best game for the people. That's so. right, he did. <laughs> Emerson, Emerson Matsuchi. That's true. Yes. Me, okay, Roy. You get Emerson, and me and Z will take you down. We're gonna do a hey, team. We'll, we'll even throw you, Mike. I was gonna say I like. How wait, wait, wait. We don't need handicaps Evan, to pull us back, with Mike Delisi. Stand yeah. towards your sub. And we're, I, for one, won't stand for it. We're giving Roy <laughs> you. You get. You suck my battleship. <laughs> well, that's, I get to be uh, on my own team. Well, that's good. <laughs> I don't care. Awesome, put but me, yeah, Captain Sonar, brig, my whatever. number ninety-nine. All right, uh, I still haven't played that, by the way, but I, I need to. My number ninety-nine is a kind of a troops on the map game, and it's a a, a game that I have a hard time saying correctly. Rurik, <laughs> Rurik, Don. Oh, wow, Kiev. that's a good choice. Yeah, so. Um, Rurik is, as I said, a troops on the map game, but what there's a couple of things that I really like about it is it kind of throws some of the conventions of that genre on its head a little bit. First of all, it's a, a very quick playing game, and, and that's something that I think is a plus. It doesn't overstay its welcome. But the most interesting aspect of this game is kind of the action selection mechanism. You've got actions you can take, which are generally things like moving your troops on the board, attacking, taxing to get resources and, and things along those lines. But it's done with a system of kind of influence where you have different workers that have different strengths and you place them on these different spots. And the bigger the number, the stronger that action is going to be. However, you're going to go later in influence so you, or in, uh, in um, initiative. So you'll go later. But you can bribe so that you're putting a worker in a higher spot that's a stronger worker going more quickly. I'm making it sound more confusing than it is. It's a really slick system. It's a lot of fun. Um, It's just a really nice play on this dudes or troops on a map system 
Rurik, Dawn of Kiev. Hmm. I think you might like that game, Z. I don't know. I think you might. Yeah, I think you might like it. it. I haven't played Mm -hmm. it. I passed. Four out of (laughs) ten. All right, my number 99. What's that? A peek behind the curtain of Z's review process. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, (laughs) My number 99 is uh, a Euro game that feels, always has felt to me like a throwback to when Euro games were um, perhaps a little bit simpler. They were simpler times, guys. Oh, oh my word. You sound like an old fogey here. Go ahead. Yeah. My number, 99 is, my number 99 is Gold West. In Gold West, mm. you are going to be deploying these little tents. You are controlling space on the map. You are going to be collecting different goods and then spending those to build up, to build uh, different buildings in your uh, frontier town here. It's it's very simple. It's very Euro style game, very sort of mechanical, and I've always enjoyed it. It's quick playing. That's a big part of it. It's very modular. That's a big part of it. But everything interconnects to something else. So it's all these gears within gears, and no matter which which thing you're sort of spinning, something else is happening across the board that you are probably ignoring and and do you feel bad about that i enjoy that kind of game that kind of game that's that wants you to do everything you know you can't and uh it's got that pleasant amount of tension of man i'm mm-hmm. falling behind on this thing i want to be doing this one works for me i i like it for that for that reason and it does feel in many ways like a throwback it's not um it's fairly bare-faced you see what's going on and there are not a lot of sort of sub mechanisms to speak of, mm. so yeah, it feels like an old Canizia or something, and I, I like that mm. about it. So this was your oh, number sixty last year? Uh, well, now it's garbage. It's only night. <laughs> the truth has uh, finally revealed itself, and I suddenly hate it. This is one of those games that I need. It's like on my bucket list to play. Yeah. And I still have not played it. I got to get around to it. All right, guys, I need you we're also. Doing, we're writing down games other people mention. Write it down. That we want to play, down. and we will have a big catch up, catch up palooza. Right. Well, if it's well, falling down your list so fast, does it even really matter? Or? Well, Probably this, is, not. this is actually a good <laughs> thing that we're talking about here. All right, here we go. People's Choice. Number 99, brand new to the list here. Mm. Uh, even though it came out slightly before we did it last year, but it's now more wide distribution, and that's It's a Wonderful World. This game is getting some more buzz now, mostly because mm-hmm. I think the people who like Race for the Galaxy, this this scratches that same itch. Mm-hmm. It's very similar, yeah. has a fun, bright theme. So that's my guess mm-hmm. why people like it. Also, also, I think it was, it was a Kickstarter project at first, and I think it's now more widely available in retail. I think that has a lot to do with it, too. And Lucky oh, nice. Duck helped bring that yeah. into focus, and they're getting games. Lucky Duck does a good job at getting games on shelves. Yes, okay. It's so, an approachable game with a with a, a appealing theme. That's awesome. It is a wonderful world. Nice. Crap. Back. All right, my number ninety-eight <laughs> has been on the list almost since the beginning, although it was forty last year. And I'm going to call this the reason. It's still on the list because I like it. But the COVID knock against it, it's a party game, and that is Balderdash. Love Balderdash. Uh. Um, but 98? Oh, poor Balderdash. <laughs> yeah, okay. A- again, <laughs> How, we're going to run this joke into the ground here, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, but I like Balderdash a lot. The silliness of it, they finally just got rid of the whole beyond Balderdash, and they just put it all in yeah. one game. Which yeah. made it a lot easier for me and Z to talk about. Because we used to have to keep saying, Balderdash. But what we actually mean... No, just beyond Balderdash I still, I still kind of say Beyond Balderdash. I, I mm. Just because that's the copy I, I own. But but mm. you're right. It's just Balderdash now. It's the same thing now. This is one of the, the party games that makes me laugh more than anything else. And there you have it. Balderdash. Yeah. It's also a word that should be used much more in the English language. I'm, I'm we working need to bring on that. Balderdash <laughs> back. Mike, your shirt is Balderdash. 
No, that's wrong. perfect, Tom. <laughs> no, no, that's good. This is a this this shirt is balderdash. I should be ashamed. Awesome. For me, my uh, 98 is a card game, a uh, living style card game, but not from Fantasy Flight. It is actually Ashes, um, Rise of the Phoenix Born. I really enjoy. You're going to get sued, bro. It's not a living (laughs) card game. Fine. They were slightly owned by (laughs) Asmodee for a while. Oh, this would be where our feet went down. Ooh, ah. But anyway, um, Ashes is really fun. One of the things I really enjoy about it, I really enjoy card games and building decks and all sorts of stuff like that. I have a huge history with that. But one of the cool things about Ashes is you feel super powerful at the beginning of the game because you start with five cards. You get to choose which five cards you start with and you roll these dice and you have a huge pool of stuff to do those things with. It To me, it almost feels like you have almost everything you need to play out your plan right at the very beginning. And it's just how you utilize that and how you counteract with your opponent and and do all those things i'm really excited to try out the new ashes reborn and see how they tweak the system um, one of the things that hindered this a little bit for me is it felt very grindy and extremely thinky and i think they've tried to like streamline and make a lot of the actions not like lock each other up so much in the new mm. version of the game so we'll see how ashes does in the future for my top 100 but i really do enjoy the game and the artwork is phenomenal for this game and yeah. the gameplay is really awesome too so that is my number ninety-eight, Ashes: Rise of the Phoenix Born, which will yeah, I was going to mention that soon. art. That art, that art is amazing. It really is. Oh, for sure. Um, so my number ninety-eight is a one versus many game, and I Ooh. don't always like these style of games. I know that that's a very popular genre, but it's one that doesn't usually work for me. This game does, and perhaps it's on my list because I played it relatively recently mm. with one. Very evil Mr. Z Garcia as the one. And this is The Others. The oh. Others is a game oh, yeah. themed I heard, around I heard the, him the, 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 in the other room. Yes, he was laughing evil. <laughs> it was a bunch of balderdash, if I might say so. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Others is a, as I said, a one versus many game where one player, the one, is playing one of the seven deadly sins. And uh, the others are playing the, the agents of faith. And basically, it's this kind of. It has a dungeon crawl feel, but not exactly. It's a very streamlined rule set where you're not going to get bogged down in what do we have to do. Uh, the decisions are, generally speaking, uh, easy to discern. They're not always easy to make the right decision. And it has this great kind of feeling where there are times when the sin feel, uh, player, you feel like they're overwhelmingly powerful and there's no chance you've got. But then the game gives you an opportunity as the faith uh, team to kind of counteract that. I've only played as the Sin player maybe twice, and it's a very different feel, but it, but it also is very entertaining. So uh, I really uh, have enjoyed every play of The Others. So that's why it's my number 98. I think this just yes. barely missed my list. Um, if mm. I've never played as a Sins player and I've only played the one game and it still almost mm. made it onto my top 100, wow. I would love to play this game more and um, see how it is to play both sides. And I could see this yeah. being on my list as well. Mm-hmm. As someone yeah, pure in heart, this isn't even close to my top 100. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. I don't like it as much as the rest of y'all. Mm-hmm. All right. My number 98 is a game called Kashgar, Merchants of the Silk Road. This Ooh. is a card game, and it's all basically about cards with special powers on them. And that right mm. there will probably get me to play your game like 60% of the time. I love me <laughs> cards with special powers. This one, you have uh, these columns of cards, basically. And on your turn, you trigger one at the bottom of one of your three columns, probably. And after you do whatever it says, you stick it at the top of the column. And you can't do that again until you cycle the other cards by taking their actions. And that guy drops all the way to the bottom again. That's it. Very mechanical, but puzzly, enjoyable. Some set collecting, cashing in resources. Uh, Theme is whatever who cares <laughs> but it's a fun game and i do enjoy the game Kashgar merchants of the silk road if i want to play something tactical and quick and i don't care about it feeling thematic this will do that for me so there you now, go that's my number 98 a dominion killer for you z oh that's an interesting question tom um hmm. well thank you I don't know. They do. They do inhabit a little bit of the same space, but this is not as flexible as Dominion. This one is always about getting resources and then filling orders. 
Dominion feels like sometimes it's about different things, like attacking you, keeping you down, uh, getting more actions quicker because you need to accomplish something. You know what I mean? So, no, not quite. You do know that two years ago, this was your number 12. Oh, wow. Ooh. And then last Damn. year it was 66. Oh, that go. is a precipitous tumble. <laughs> <laughs> it's still within, it just seems worse because it's in the top 100. You know, yeah. like I have a game that's gone from 134 to 829, you know. <laughs> Who right, knows? Right, 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 and nobody knows, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. All righty, folks. Uh, by the way, uh, Caitlin Morgan, thank you very much. Thank you for enjoying the show. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The People's Choice number... Oh, wait. I'm on the wrong sheet. That was mine. The People's Choice number 97 was... 90, oh, 98. Oh, sorry, 98. 98. 98 <laughs> was 81 last year and 113 the year before that. So it's holding pretty steady. And that is Baron Park. A oh. lot of these polyamino games get out there, but not very many hit the top 100. So this yeah. is clearly one that people enjoy. I think the theme of bears, people like... But also the rules for this one aren't convoluted at all. Simply fill up the board, get the next board. Mm -hmm. So I still haven't played the expansion for this. That's bad news, Tom. You were waiting. Wah, 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 <laughs> that's, wah. that's really bad, Mike. Let's move on. Boulder Dash. <laughs> My number 97 has been on my list for quite a few years here. It was 83 last year, um, so pretty steady. And a new edition came out, and that's On the Underground. Ooh. I feel like I'm the only person here who really likes this game. Ooh. But On the Underground, I love the that. new edition. It's beautiful. has two different maps. I still think the game plays best with two or three. You're building an underground uh, you know, subway system and then trying to get somebody to move along your trains rather than other people's they're coming out with an expansion for it with two more maps i'm excited to see those this mm -hmm. year but just really enjoy this one uh on the underground mm. all right it looks beautiful i agree i like the the look of the new edition and then one of those expansions toms adds a solo mode so hey you know i may i may reevaluate <laughs> okay, my Mike, Mike my is, opinion of this game being not very you gotta good. stop say that because Saying a game has a solo mode at this point is like saying, also, it comes in a box. It also <laughs> advertises that you have no friends, and maybe you shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> That's not what it's about. Hey. Balderdash! Balderdash! <laughs> All right, my 97 is a game that is brand new to the list. Um, it's a very enjoyable game, cooperative about horror, and that is Horrified. So Horrified, there's all these different universal monsters that are running around and you're trying to figure out different ways to stop them. And it can also be very different depending on the monsters you're playing with on how you go about such things. Um, I really enjoy it because it's very cooperative. You're trying to help these different villagers to stay away from the monsters and working together to find the correct things depending on the monster. Um, and I just found this game extremely enjoyable and easy to get into. I feel like you could easily play this with families as well. So this is a great cooperative game, especially if you want one with that monster theme. And that is Horrified by 97. Fantastic. Good let's, get some more, let's get some expansions out here. We need the oh, block. Oh, sure. That would be awesome. Uh, no. I, I, yeah. I, I, they All the get monsters. On that. That's right. <clears throat> All right. Um, my number 97 is also a new game, even newer than Horrified. And I think I may surprise some of you Ooh. guys with this pick. My number 97 is Paleo. This is a very new game. And it's one that... Uh, you know how sometimes you'll play a game and you had a good experience with it, but then you find yourself thinking about it over and over again and thinking, man, that really was cool and I want to play that some more. And, and so this is one where I played the review copy and then I went out and bought my own copy because I wanted to continue to play through the modules. I think one of the things that Paleo does well is it feels different, even though it has a lot of familiarity as a cooperative game, it, it kind of doesn't feel like other cooperative games. It feels almost like, and I think you brought this up, Z, it, it almost feels like a streamlined Robinson Crusoe mm -hmm. um, with the elements of crafting. And mm. I really thought this game did yeah, some very, true. very cool things. I loved how the backs of the cards give you an indication of what you might find, but you don't know for sure. And I like that 
you know, you're looking around the table. If you're if you're playing solo, you lose this. But if you're playing with others, you're looking around and and, and you you've got a different way of communicating. Like, okay, we we don't both necessarily need wood or or potentially. So let's try to 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 vary what we're coming. It's just a really cool game. I, I, this one surprised me at how much I liked it, and I I have enjoyed continuing to play through it. So that is my number hmm. ninety seven, Paleo. I'm very surprised. I did not yeah. get the indication when I taught you this game that mm -hmm. it would be something even remotely in your top 100. So now I'm thinking it might have been just the fact that I was there. Um, Could have been Z. Could did you also play me. this solo? I have. Yeah, that's where. So, I've been so it has nothing to do with Z. I thought this would is. be higher on Z's list than <laughs> yours, Mike. Well, you don't know. I mean, it might it's, be. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I also went out and bought a copy of this. Okay. But it did not make my top 100. Okay, hmm. okay. I, I, it might next year, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It might yeah, if I yeah. keep digging into it and exploring mm -hmm. more more of it. But I agree that it is different, and it has mm -hmm. that going forward. In a, in a sea of co-ops, right. this one does stand out merely on that. I okay. love cooperative games. I'd love to try it. Tom I agree with everything right. that's been said. <laughs> <laughs> My number 97 is one of the lesser loved Days of Wonder games, and this is Relic Runners. Oh. Relic Runners is a gorgeous game uh, about exploring the jungle, uh, finding different paths through the jungle, building those paths, I suppose, and then collecting these relics, these really cool plastic pieces. The game's got a lot more going on. If you, if you sort of put it down for a while and come back to it mm -hmm. as you are relearning it, which this happened to me, I want to say uh, 2019, it must have been. I taught it again, and I thought, wow, I forgot how much was in this. This is a bigger teach. There is more going on than I remember there being. I was thinking Ticket to Ride. There's more going on here than in something like Ticket to Ride. Um, and I like that about it because it is absolutely stunning, but there is interest. Family plus, right? That's, that's kind mm -hmm. of where this lives. Uh, and uh, everything about it is enjoyable. I like the game length. I like the aesthetics. I like the atmosphere it presents, that the different players will do very different things in order to accomplish their goals. I just enjoy it. It's a fun one, and it's, uh, yeah. it's a pleasant game to bring to the table. It, it, it achieves what Days of Wonder is out there trying to do, and that is put you in that mind frame of being younger and the the excitement and joy of bringing a board game to the table and going gee golly let's play a game you're like mm -hmm. the champion of this game i think most people have forgotten yeah. about it i also yeah. i'm a big fan of the expression gee golly he didn't know that <laughs> clearly yeah it's a cool on kind of route building it is yeah it is yeah so there you go my 97 relic runners yeah you've been pretty consistent with this one z it was 90 five last year and 100 the year before that wow oh, all right huh. all right okay by the way thank you to anthony and juan we appreciate the thank super you. chats thank all you. right number 97 the people are also consistent was 94 last year so pretty much the same spot and that's western legends mm. this one as uh, i this is one of those games that i've got to say when i go to conventions when i used to back in the day <laughs> go to conventions <laughs> i almost always saw a group playing this it has that yeah. Arkham Horror thing where every time I go to a convention, I see people playing Arkham Horror. Western Legends has that same thing, and I think the expansion adds more. And I, I believe another expansion was either Kickstarted or is coming out. Mm. Ah, so much Western stuff. And the, the yeah. thing about it, though, is Western Legends has pretty much no competition in this regard. Like, if you want to play a game where you get to do all this cool Western stuff, right. there's not many out there at all. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, right, people like, a like sand their sandboxes. Yeah. Yeah, like I a sandbox style, style game. game. Mm -hmm. So there you go. People's Choice 97 Western Legends. <laughs> 96 for me is new to the list, but actually it was 175 two years ago. So it's moved up for me. And this is an abstract strategy game that I just keep coming back to, and that's War Chest. Hmm. War Chest is a it's abstract strategy. I mean, it has a war theme, but it's the same war theme as, let's say, chess is a war theme. Hmm. And you have these poker chip pieces you're moving around trying to capture different spots on the board. But then it has a little bit of deck building 
as you pull chips from a bag and you can use those to move it or put them on the board. I feel like there's just some really cool concepts here and it, it scales a two and a four player game. Both work. I think very well, unlike most games that say that. Right. So high quality. I mean, you buy this, you're getting a pile of poker chips. They Mm -hmm. came out with an expansion for it this year, which added just some more poker chips and a minor rules. That's all I like in an expansion. So War Chest, my number 96. Mm. Nice. I'm so putting it on the on the list, the catch up palooza list. Yeah, I haven't played this one. I, I'd be down for that too. So my ninety six is a game that I feel like I played a ton of before I would really consider myself a hobby board gamer, and I still really enjoy this game. A lot of people complain about some of the different mechanisms not working super well, but this is Betrayal at House on the Hill. And I put ah. Betrayal at House on the Hill and Scooby-Doo version of Betrayal at House on the Hill because I've been recently playing this with my kids a bunch, and I've really enjoyed the way it works um, for that version. So I technically have two games in this slot, but Betrayal at House on the Hill, um, it is definitely a game that's very niche Mm. but it fills that theme of um running around and exploring this mansion and then just coming together and like trying to overcome the bad guy or if you are the traitor then figuring out a way to mess up the other players and one of the main reasons this is on my list is just for the thematics of it and the experience that this game gives i find it really enjoyable playing this game and i've had so much success teaching it to lots of people over the years Granted, sometimes they don't work out as well as others, but as long as you take it lightheartedly, I really had a lot of fun with it. So, Roy, let me ask you this. Is is nostalgia then a driving point here? Like, if I said, I want to play Betrayal House on the Hill, would you say, oh, man? Yeah, I would totally play with Betrayal House on the Hill. I mean, I've been I'm just recently kidding. I wouldn't this. say that. Um... I, I actually really enjoy this game a lot. I know it gets a lot of flack, but it's about, for me, this game is about the experience and the silliness that happens along the way. And I do That's have a true. lot of memories. So there is yeah. definitely a nostalgia element in there as well, um, which we'll probably see with other games on my list also. Um, it's just in my top okay. 100 because I really enjoy the game. Well, you got to play the legacy version then. Yeah. I always, we I really wanted to play the legacy one and never was able to make it happen. So. Mm. All right, in honor of Roy, my number 96 are two completely different and unrelated games. That's not true. Actually, I'm kind of cheating. How are they unrelated? That makes no sense. I'm totally kidding. Uh, My number 96 is more of a game system. This is the Funkoverse strategy game. and So you have to pick one. You have to pick one. (laughs) All right, I'm picking picking one one, then. Cool Aid Man. There There you go. go. Cool Aid Man by itself. Oh, yeah. It's, you just yeah, he just runs around smashing through walls. That's the game. So uh, Funkoverse strategy game is, as I said, it's kind of a game system, and it's a skirmish game, a very simple skirmish game system where you are taking characters from various in- intellectual properties. You're taking DC, your uh, heroes and villains. You're taking the Golden Girls. You're taking Kool Aid Man, and you're just kind of putting them together. And there's a, a number of different modes you can kind of play straight battle games you can play capture the flag they have these very simplified maps that are you know only thematic in the sense that it might be you know the joker's lair or you know one of the golden girls apartments but otherwise it's just a simple skirmish map but i really like this game because i like that it leans into the silliness it does not take itself terribly seriously it's another game that doesn't overstay its welcome i do think it does a couple of pretty novel things i think the cooldown track is a pretty innovative element that I hope other games will kind of uh, uh, use. It's this idea of you've got special abilities and kind of the stronger the ability, the higher you put it on this cooldown track and you have to wait for it to come off of that track before you can use it again. It's a neat idea and it's there have been similar things done before but never quite like that. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm still excited about what's to come. If there's a character I'm not terribly interested in, I don't feel like I need to get it, but to me, that's what it's all down to is I got all keep the coming out with these cool, quirky characters <laughs> and I'll continue to be interested. So that's my number 96, the Funkover strategy game. All right. Cool. My number 96 is an abstract like Tom's War Chest was. And this one's been around on my list for a long time, too. This is Hive, yeah. the two player only capture the queen style game in which you are moving hexagonal pieces free form. They are in one hive. They all have to be touching. And each one moves differently on your turn. You bring a new piece into play, or you move one and try to surround the opponent's beat. That's it. It It's sort of chess light um, in many ways. It's uh, yeah. 
it's more approachable. It's a little bit simpler. It's uh, it's one I've also had good success teaching to people because most folks who know really, but just no, not a, not a whole lot about games, understand abstract games because they've been around chess and checkers and you know Chinese checkers, whatever. So that that's a nice transition. It's easy to be like, hey, look, this one, you don't know anything about it, but you know these abstract games. So this piece moves like this, that piece moves like that. Try to surround this one and you win. It's fun. I haven't played it in a while, but it's uh, it's one of those games I love to just throw down on any old surface and give it a go. The pieces are indestructible, so you can take it to the beach, you can do whatever. So yeah, that's my number 96, Hive. Yeah, it was 89 last year, so pretty mm. you're pretty consistent there for a while. Yeah. All right, People's Choice here. This has dropped slightly. It was 42 last year, 39 the year before that. But I know why, mm. I think, and that's Seventh Continent. And I mm. think it's, when this game came out, very popular Kickstarter, one of the most popular Kickstarters sure. of all time. It's very story-driven, and once you're done with the story, that's going to fade as time goes by and probably just lower on your list. Right. right? Sure. But if you finish a story driven game, you can remember that great experience, but it might not be in your top 10. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I agree. Still very popular, still made the top list. You know, sure. that's, that's pretty impressive. And I think it, it, it didn't hurt that they came out with that beginner version that right. a smaller, you know, friendly version to put on the retail shelves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So seventh continent, your number 96. Ooh. Back. My number 95 was 71 last year, so kind of close. I still enjoy this game, although I haven't played the expansion with it yet because someone here stole that and played it and reviewed it, and that's Ooh. Rez Arcana. Mm. Um, this is... Oh. Of all the tableau building style games that exist this may be the most streamlined Hmm. it really feels uh, this is a game that whether you like it or not i think you gotta admit it's a really well done design i don't know how to explain it you know there are games i like they're big and they're sprawling this one looks a little sprawling but it's not and the fact that every game is different i know enough about the expansion to know it just adds a little bit of more of the same Mm-hmm. Which I'm pumped with, you know, and mm. Mm, I do enjoy right, it. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's that polish, I think, is what you're kind of what you're hinting yeah. at is that this game polish. feels like it's been, you know, they 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 sanded it down with various grains until it was a fine, high finish, you know, and and yeah, you can tell, you can tell that they, they it's just sharp. It's just very, mm. very sharp. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm the outlier here. I'm not a huge fan of this game, but I would never argue that it's not extremely well designed. It's just when you say it's streamlined, to me, it was streamlined to the point where it took a lot of I just didn't feel like there was anything there, really. Well, it just what? felt like it was. You're wrong. Well, hey, look, <laughs> you, if, if you if you My like kids uh, say he likes one verse many games, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, my 95 is a dice-rolling, planet-collecting game called Tiny Epic Galaxies. This is a game... A space game, shock. I don't think I've ever heard This is the only space game on my list, Um, so don't expect to see any other ones. Um, But Mm. this is a very enjoyable small box game where you can roll dice and you're you're competing against the other players to colonize all these different planets and trying to utilize these special abilities on those planets to trigger gathering different resources and following other people's actions and trying to race the other players to have the I think it's like you need 12 points to win the game. And if you get there, then you're the the winner of the game. It's very enjoyable trying to figure out how to min max your resources, but then also outsmart your opponents and kind of race them to colonize the planets. It's very interesting the way that you have to like race with your different ships. It's like, oh, I think I can beat them to that planet, you know, that sort of thing. Um, But yeah, definitely a very enjoyable small box game, Tiny Epic Galaxies. Yeah, Roy, we played the the kind of the new, Mm -hmm. even more streamlined version of it, Blast Off. Do you think you prefer still base uh, galaxies to that? 
I think they're so similar. Like they're extremely, extremely similar. The only difference in these yeah. two to me is almost just the iconography. Like Tiny Epic Galaxies has the words all written out for you. And Blast Off yeah. is very much just icons, making it more language independent. Um, I still think I like Galaxies better because it also does have the solo mode if you want to do that in, in the mm -hmm. regular Galaxies. And there's also the expansion into the black if you're right. playing with the regular version. So that sort of stuff adds it, makes it a little bit higher than me than Blast Off currently. But if you're looking to get into the game, Blast Off might be a good start. You two should review that at some point. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we probably need to do that, don't we? Mm -hmm. I'll just All do right, it come on, Mike, tell us about Raz Arcana, your next pick. <laughs> My number 95 <laughs> is a generic fantasy game that has nothing there. It's no. Um, my That's number 95 say. is a is another cooperative game, but like um, Paleo, I feel like it's one that does things very differently, and that's what really has gotten my attention. That is Dawn of Peacemakers. It also doesn't hurt that this game looks gorgeous. I adore the aesthetic that this designer has created. Uh, it's kind of in the same universe as the Dawn, the Dale of Merchants. Um, right. uh, Sammy Lasco, I believe. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. Um, but uh, Dawn of Peacemakers is a game that kind of throws some uh, some things you may be used to on their head. So the essential idea here is that this is a campaign-driven game where you're kind of playing through a campaign, and you've got two warring factions, animal factions, that are fighting each other. And what you're trying to do as players uh, is keep these two sides from completely defeating the other. So it looks like a standard kind of a war game where it's one side against the other. But what you're trying to do is sneakily tire each side out so that both of them just say, you know what? We're tired of fighting. We give up. <laughs> and they don't, you know, one side doesn't completely defeat the other side. It's a little tweak, but it completely changes your thinking. You're, you're, you're not, you're so used to finding what the enemy's weakness is and exploiting that. You're kind of doing that, but not exactly because you don't, if you completely defeat the side, oftentimes that can be a loss for the players. What you're trying to do is get them so that they're both kind of exhausted. And, okay, we're, we're done with this. Let's go back to, let's regroup type of it's a thing. It's such so, a dumb theme. It's not a dumb theme at all, <laughs> No, no, no. Tom. Okay, awesome I get the theme. idea of being a peacemaker. That's great. But the idea right. of getting to peace by making the armies kind of obliterate each other is, I can't get on that. They're already fighting each other, right? They're already fighting each other. You are a small, either one person or a small group of people. You're not going to be able to do much other than try to... The, the, I, you, you don't have that much influence. All you're trying to do is just kind of have this balancing act. I don't think it's a dumb idea. I think it's an interesting idea. I mean, we can agree to disagree. You're wrong, but it's, it's, <laughs> I just think it's an interesting, it's an interesting kind of twist on... on the standard trope that you'll often type C. So I, no, I get I get that it's a, a, a twist. I, I do agree on that. I just I highly dislike this game. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. That's okay. Oh, whoop. that's my Thank number ninety five. <laughs> All right, my ninety five. Speaking of uh, tired tropes and twists, uh, no, that's not true. But this is an old game. Tom and I were actually just just talking about this game a, a few days ago, and the. Uh, the topic of nostalgia came up. Hmm. And much like Roy, I think the game You're Bluffing is hmm. on my list partly because of nostalgia. Yes, I've played this game for a long time. I remember enjoying it very much when, uh, you know, in, in, in a bigger group, in a larger setting. And it's one that just makes me feel, it gives me a warm sort of feeling, you know, this idea of being a... Uh, uh, cattle trader sort of for these characters. It's an open bidding system. You reveal a couple of cards or a card, and then everybody's throwing out bids. When somebody finally makes the highest bid, you can sell them this thing you flipped from the from the deck, take their money, or, and I think this is the first game that did this back in the day, you can just buy it yourself for what they were willing to pay and give them the money. So that it gave you that choice. If you, mm -hmm. you know, if you try to get too good a deal, then I'll just give, pay you off and buy it for myself. But then there's also the other half of it, which is this blind bidding and counter bidding. Hey, I'm going to make you an offer for your horse. Here you go. But you can't look at these cards. You can either take it or make me a counter bid. There's a lot of bluffing and tension in mm -hmm. those moments, too. The game's a little long. 
it, it does outstay its welcome a little bit, uh, but it's just a blast. It's silly. It's riotous. It's uh, enjoyable. I, I very much enjoy your bluffing. So there mm-hmm. you go, my number 95. This is actually somewhat new to your list. Last year it was your 100. Mm. It's getting better. Really? Now st- you're getting older. Nostalgia's yes. creeping in. That's, you know what? <laughs> that could easily be it. Yeah, that could By the time be you're it. 75, this will be your number one game. <laughs> <laughs> if I or make is it, it a 75, I'll happily make this my number one. <laughs> All right. My, the People's Choice. Ooh. We're at number 94 here. This has been on the list, People's Choice, for six years. Started at 73, still nice. at 94, and that is Sushi Go Party. Yeah. Uh, Sushi Go Wait. is a um just a fantastic drafting game that's really simple and while a lot of card games like uh point sal and other ones are trying to like horn in on his territory i think um did did you skip the 95 i think you're reading the 94 am i Uh reading 94 so what i really meant everybody (laughs) don't don't worry about what 94 is 95 for people's choice is near and far which is on the list for three that's Years nothing like Sushi straight. Go Party. <laughs> You're so confused. Big storytelling game. And Mike has promised us, and he better not be lying, <gasps> that the new game that just was is going to getting delivered to Kickstarter backers, mm-hmm. which is um Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods, he says is very similar to Near and Far. Yeah, at least from what I've seen, if you like Near and Far, I can't imagine you're not gonna like Sleeping Gods. Nice. So, I'm excited. Yeah, this is definitely one of uh, Ryan Lockett's most popular games. Near mm-hmm. and far, definitely 95. You'll have to wait to 94 to see what surprise that What could be. it be? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gregory, first of all, thank you very much. We appreciate Ooh, your super chat. Thank you, Gregory. All right. For me, number 94. I've got to like look at these numbers really carefully now. So 94 was 76 last year, 50 the year before that. I feel like had I played it this year, it might have gone up. And I will play it as soon as I get over my intimidation of opening up the box. I'm going to make Mike play it with me. And that's Anachrony. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Now, Mike, you played Anachrony, right? I have, yes. But the new new big big box game version that just came in with the new expansion is one of the most intimidating things I've ever yeah. seen. <laughs> it's crazy. It took yeah. us hours to sort it out, and then I was like, put it in the library. <laughs> I'll pull it really? out at some point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. We brought out the crane and picked it up, and we moved it. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. It's <laughs> massive. But I still do like the game a lot. It's one of the heaviest yeah. Euro games that I enjoy, actually. Mm. Um, but I love the theme. I like that the theme works. It's also worker placement. So yeah. I've heard that this big box actually makes setup faster. Um, and also it makes reading the rules quicker. Mm. One of those statements is Balderdash. <laughs> there you go, Tom. That's, I'm nice. doing it right, right? Yes. All right. So anyway, my number, 94, Anachrony. I'm down to play it again with you, Tom, for sure. I'll be happy to watch you guys play it. Correct. <laughs> My 94 is a game that feels a lot like a head-to-head card game, but actually utilizes dice. And this is Dice Masters. I love Marvel superheroes, as many people know. And Dice Masters basically takes Marvel superheroes and mashes it up with all sorts of different IPs. Me and Tom even played a wrestling version of Dice Masters. Um, And I just really (laughs) enjoy the the, uh, way that the, the dice work. It's very Magic the Gathering style as you're like going up against each other. But the entire time you're recruiting all of these dice very much like a deck builder. So you're dice bag building, pulling these things out, triggering different special abilities on your dice, and just going head to head smashing. Normally the games are pretty quick overall as you're trying to find ways to bust through your opponent's defenses and knock out their life points. Um, Very many games have that sort of theme, but I really enjoy the fact that there's all sorts of different themes on this. I mostly prefer the Marvel stuff, but I really enjoy Marvel Dice Masters. I have a confession. It (gasps) fell off my list. My man. Boom, and boom, boom. That, that, that's boom, hurtful because I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that you've recently been playing this game with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I used Correct. to like it. Then look I played up, it with. Look up the like... word correlation. Mm-hmm. Ah. No, I, it's still in my top. It's like, 
it's it's probably 101 or it's a, it's really close. No, but, okay, no, nah, come on, nah, Tom. Nah, you're not, you're not first time I used it. Garbage. First time I said it. David, man, it's too soon for you to be like, oh, it's 101. I do want to yeah, mention that I don't that. really do the whole like chasing booster packs or anything like that. I just have a few of the like core sets or the starter sets, and I have them in like a little tackle box thing, and I just pull those out to play with and draft the cards. So I'm not into well, like the whole like strategic tournament builds for this game. I just play it very casually. I have that mega crate full of it here in the closet. <laughs> it's so I have everything for Dice Masters. Well, I keep all the Marvel and DC stuff. The other stuff mm-hmm. doesn't mesh as well, in my opinion, oh, together. Sure. All right. Awesome. It's at this point in uh, Mike's list that he realizes he has a lot of cooperative games in the bottom half of his list. Also, he refers to himself in the third person. My number 94 <laughs> is Rising 5, Runes of Astros. This is basically cooperative mastermind if you're familiar with that old game where you're trying to kind of guess a pattern of colors and it's really a very simple game there's there's not a whole lot going on i think it's really good as a family weight cooperative game it looks gorgeous because it has artwork by vincent dutrait that's immediately going to get my uh, interest level up uh you you do use an app uh it's app driven you can play without it but you really kind of need the app uh, otherwise it's a one person playing the mastermind and you don't want that use the app um but w- what i really do like about this game is that in many cooperative games you're going to have players that have a special power right you're 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 the doctor or you're the communication specialist and you've got that special power throughout the whole game mm-hmm. well what rising 5 does is that you've got different characters with different special abilities but everybody has potentially control of all of those characters and all of their abilities. You're basically, you have cards in your hand that are representative of those characters. You play those cards down and now you're saying, I'm gonna be using this character. Mm -hmm. I really like that. I like having access to all of the special abilities on your turn. And uh, that just that little twist, the beautiful art, the that kind of core mechanic, which I've always enjoyed, the deductive uh, mastermind thing has uh, always worked. Maybe a little easy, there are ways to make it more difficult, but like I said, a good family weight cooperative game, Rising 5, Runes of Astros. Yep. And let's not forget how quick that game is. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, 30 app, minutes. the app will tell you how long you played, so it's very easy yep. to clock. And it right. is consistently 30, 32 yep. minutes, 34 yep. minutes. I mean, That's it's awesome. amazingly fast. So very You're cool. Absolutely right. Alrighty, my number 94 is a trick-taking game, and I prefer those to be fairly standard with one or two little twists on top of that. Hmm. Uh, my 94 is a game called Eternity that was, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken, was just re-released yeah. as uh, a Nancy. It's, yep. it's the same game with a, with a new theme. I like the Eternity theme still better. Uh, and you are basically playing three hands of cards, you play a card, everybody follows suit, all that same deal. Uh, but one player may abstain from playing a card and just uh, gather a plot of land, if you would. And as you are winning tricks, you then take... Um, let me see. No, no, when you abstain, you gain trees. And when you win tricks, you get a plot of land and you can plant one of your trees on it. And what you're trying to do is have as many plots of land as you have trees. You get the most points by doing that. If you have uh, not, if, if they don't match, you have fewer trees, then you just get like a point per tree. But if you have too many trees, meaning some will die, then you don't score. And that's basically the game. It's this idea of when do I win? When do I not win? I love trick taking games that it's not about winning, 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 winning. It's about how much do you win? At some point, the needle goes past a point that you don't want it to go past, and now you're harming yourself by winning. This is one of those. Eternity is a beautiful little game, quick playing. Uh, I very much enjoy it. My number 94. Hmm. People's Choice number 94 is... Um... <laughs> Can we guess? Let me guess. Let me guess. Sushi Go Party. Um, <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Drafted game, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we also, had, I Troy, got pictures thanks for the super chat. Troy T. Thanks, Troy. And, and cool. Sushi Go Party, thank you for showing up today. Good choice, people. Okay. Back. All right.
Alrighty, my number 93 here has been on my list for almost since the very beginning. It was 86 last year, so it's dropped a bit because there are so many worker placement games out there. But I still love this one because it's one of the few where the workers are different than each other. And that is Age of Empires 3, or as it's called now, Empires Age of Discovery. I think this game has held up pretty well uh, over the years. It's a mix of area control and worker placement. I think the new version of it put the expansion in and added just a little bit of differentiation and helped out so that the ship strategy, if you played it, you know what I'm talking about, is not overly dominant. They tried to make a space version of this, which I did not enjoy at all. And um, But I really like this one. Empire's Age of Discovery. What did you yeah. not like about the space one, Tom? Uh, the space one had like revolts at the end that kind of blew up like huge swaths of the board. So the area control may or may not matter at the end. Got mm. it. Okay. Yeah, I want to play oh. the new printing of this, the normal one. I mean, I used to own the... The one from, gosh, what was that company called? Tropical Games, way back in the day? Uh, Tropical Games was like a company that just existed real briefly. That Glenn Drover, like, he was running Eagle Griffin. Then he made Tropical yeah. Games, and then he disappeared for a while. Now he's back with Forbidden Games. You right. can no longer mm. play them. Right. right. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I want to play the new printing of this and see what see what that's like. It's been ages since I played. Mm. Nice. My number 93 is a game that I feel like probably gets some flack sometimes, but it's super short. This kind of like started off the micro game craze, and that is Love Letter. And I just put poor ah! Love Letter on here. I really, yeah. really enjoy Love Letter. I, I used to take it with me everywhere. I played it a ton with coworkers. I played it at restaurants waiting for our meal to arrive. I've gotten people into the hobby by playing Love Letter with them and teaching them this super simple game about just deducing what other people have in their hand. And um, I really enjoy the way it works. I know you guys are balking at, oh my goodness, Love Letter. It's it's oversaturated. No, but... no, no. I'm just surprised you didn't put the Infinity Gauntlet one on. I mean, I guess it's they're mostly the same game, but not I'm, even I'm just saying. Oh, you're no, right. No, you're right. They're not the same dash. game. I haven't. I've only played that game <laughs> one time. This game I have yeah. played hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of times, and I actually started playing this like before times. it even blew up, um, and before mm -hmm. everybody was playing it. So um, <laughs> I'm gonna be hip star and be like, oh my goodness. Um, but I really well, enjoy Love Letter, that, right? and I feel like it gets a bad rap, and I think it's I think it's worth a play and good to still bring back out today. What version do you like though? Do you have the Batman version or Wedding Edition? <laughs> I, I played a ton of the um, what is it? Uh, Legend of the Five Rings version mm. that had all of the like Japanese art on it and everything like that. I really enjoyed playing that a ton, and I had just the regular version of Love Letter, and I mean mm -hmm. I played it with all kinds of people like everybody so it's been i gotta be fun. honest this is the biggest surprise so far now i think it's a very good game i just would never have expected roy to have it on his list yeah, yeah i think it's, i agree i think it's a i think it's a great choice and i think a lot of people forget how revolutionary that game mm -hmm. was sure. when it came out i'm telling you it absolutely changed the game it was the explosion of the micro game and it is because of love letter no question so yes Good choice, Roy. I don't care what Z and Tom are going to say. Good Thank choice. Thank you, Mike. I think Please the game is fine. good. I think Roy's <laughs> picking of it. Disparage us. <laughs> Look, you can back off all you want. Everyone heard what they heard. Outrageous ahead, behavior, gentlemen. All right, my number 93. Garbage. <laughs> my number 93 is a very new game, and I actually feel like I apologize because a lot of people probably have not had a chance to play it or even to get it yet, but Come I believe on, it's going to be more readily available soon. This is Cult of the Furnace. Future. It is a I pure, this. yeah, I, I really like this game a lot. It's a pure engine builder, um, but it has this great auction mechanic to kind of tie it all together. Um, super fast. It's It's got two distinct halves. So basically, you're, you're using an auction mechanic where you've got a three, a two, and a one. And these are basically strengths. You're trying to bid on cards. But if you lose the card, you don't necessarily lose because every card has something that it produces as well. So if you have the highest bid on that card, you take it into your tableau. If you don't have the highest bid, you're going to get a certain number of resources that it produces. So 
you can bluff. You may make it seem like you really want that card, but what you really do want is someone to come outbid you so that you can produce on it. It's a really slick game. You could teach it in five minutes. Um, it's a very satisfying game. By the time you're done, you could play it as a filler, but it doesn't feel like it. You really feel like you had a full game experience. I like the aesthetic of it, even though it's generally themeless. Um, a really good game. I, I, I do hope that more and more people get a chance to play it and uh, find as much joy out of it as I have. That is 93, Furnace. Kind of sounds like Nid of Valir. You got it, baby. <laughs> mm. All right, my number uh, 93. There we are, yes. 93 is from the same designer as Sushi Go Party. And this one is called Archaeology, The New Expedition. I think Phil Walker Harding, who is the designer, is a master at putting out simple games, at yeah, refining yep. a game mm -hmm. until it is incredibly accessible. And I think one of his most accessible games is Archaeology. The new expedition happens to be a reworking of already the, the game when it first came out, Archaeology. Mm -hmm. It is, I mean, uh, at, at the, it's almost Uno-esque. In its in its trappings, this idea of draw a card, then make sets, place stuff out in front of you, or trade with the center. Okay, when I say Uno esque, I mean the the cadence of the game. It's this very mm. simple game to get into. On top of that is a little trading, a little very basic math. Uh, there are cards you draw, and you can steal from someone a card. And that's, again, a very classic sort of trapping of, of basic card games. There are sandstorms that if you are hoarding too many cards, you're hoping for a really, really big set, you got to be mindful because in the deck of cards are sandstorms, and when they hit, you're going to lose half your hand of cards. They just get thrown out into the desert, which is the table. And I really enjoy it. I think it's such a smooth game. It's so easy to get into. It... Every time I feel, every time I play that game, it makes me question. Uh, it, I, this sounds Your weird, but it, it, <laughs> it, it makes me question everything I've ever done by my uh, with my life. Um, no, it makes me feel a complete lack of pretension. You know what I mean? It's this game that just disarms pretentious behavior. I don't know how mm. else to put that. And I like that about it very much. So play it. Check. Don't well, dismiss the, this one. It's a good one. The fifth year in a row this has been on your list. Started at 90. Last year, 77. So pretty close. Okay. We've had a lot okay. of Philip Walker Harding so far, too. We had Baron Park. Mm -hmm. Sushi, Sushi Go. Sushi Go Party. Party twice. Yeah. Yeah. He just played number 93, which I am now correctly checking here. This is new to the list, although it was at 135 last year, so just moved up, and that's Lord of the Rings, Journeys in the Middle Earth. Uh. This sequel to Arkham Horror, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Mansions of Madness. Mansions. In the, it got a wider release. They added, there's several expansions out for it now. I know a lot of people really enjoy this one. I'll be curious to see where it lands next year. Will it continue to move up or disappear? Uh, but I feel pretty strongly this may not be the only time we talk about this in our top 100. Um, but uh, the people like it here at number 93. Mm -hmm. I haven't played it, though, in a while, so I need... Number 92 for me has been on my list every year except the first year because I don't think it was out then. Um, it was 62 last year. I haven't played it much, although I did this year play it as an app. And now I'm tempted to play it as an app more often. Hmm. And that's Twilight Struggle. Twilight yeah. Struggle, the two-player game of the Cold War. And I think maybe one of the reasons it's dropped slightly, I still think it's an amazing game. It was, it went as high as 12 on my list at one point. There's a lot of games that are giving me the same feeling now. And many of them do it in a faster time. Like Watergate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that quick speed of those style games uh, i mean you know i love twilight struggle and it's definitely in depth and these shorter games do not come to the height of that at all but i don't always have two and a half hours to play a game but still amazing still cold war in a box twilight struggle 
Awesome. My 92, I normally do not like trick-taking style games. Um, I just didn't really grow up with that sort of thing. But when you take trick-taking and make it cooperative and you're working together to try to figure out where everything goes, I know this will be higher on somebody's list and definitely won't be on other people's list, but this is The Crew. I really enjoy The Crew as an activity working together, trying to figure out where to put all those numbers. I know. I really enjoy it as a team um, working together to make that stuff happen. I mean, it's just a lot of fun to try to, like, get your head around and wrap your head around where you're going to make these things happen. So I need to play this out of my card so my hand's empty of this so I can take that. Um, And it's definitely been a lot of fun. This kind of feels like that same, like, love letter niche for me, like a light style game where you're working together around the table. Love letter, you're not working together. But it just gives me that same feel of like playing cards quickly turns are really quick and you're throwing stuff out there and i've just really enjoyed playing the crew and i think it's a great game and tom's gonna have it as like his number three no <laughs> let's not be throwing things out there but i'll say good choice roy and i i would rather play that any old day over say eternity mm. <laughs> i know i know i get it i, I would... understand i and that's that's yeah, a yeah. good choice clearly it i is. mean it's Clearly, a game a lot of people are enjoying. I don't dislike right. it. I just uh, no. I think it's a little overhyped. But no, I'm not. I'm not rolling my eyes like say, old man. You know who started game. that hype? The, the mm-hmm. hat man over there. That's true. <laughs> it started. It You're like, like this is gonna be my number one game of next year, and I haven't even played any other games that year. <laughs> hey, that actually yeah. came true though, didn't it? Because you wrote it mm-hmm. down and didn't let yourself break right. it. No, that's not why. <laughs> yes, Tom, I you know number two and three would have been higher. But you were like, yeah. no, I'm a man of my word. I, <laughs> I, I believe I it's said. Mike's turn here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Although I agree. Fine anyway, game. let's keep and talking I... about the crew. Um... Well, I'll, this is the last thing I'll say about it. I'll be very surprised if we don't hear it on the people's choice quite a bit higher. I, I oh, haven't yeah, looked yeah. at the list by any means, but I'll be shocked. All right. My number 92 is a game that I think would get a lot more attention if it looked different. Uh, My number 92 is Cursed Court. Um, This is a game that I, I, every single time that I've introduced somebody to this game, they've immediately been looking to buy it afterwards. Um, It is a very simple game. It's a limited information kind of betting game where you've got a grid of characters. It's very abstract. Um, And the art, I, I don't love the art and I really don't like the cover. And I think that really has been something that has kept it out of uh, more popularity. But you really should try this game. You you have a card. You know what the identity of one of these characters are. And you have a card on either side of you. And you know the identity of those cards. And everyone else is in the same boat where they've got information about some of the characters that are out there. And you're basically trying to bet on where these characters are going to show up in the grid with your limited information. You can do a little bit of bluffing. You can bet relatively high on an area trying to make somebody think that there's a character there that may not be there. Um, So there's a little bit of metagaming. It's a very quick game, a very simple game, but very satisfying. And it has that great thing that uh, you'll find in games where the big reveal, and this happens a few times in the game where everyone's done their bids and you have the big reveal and everyone's really excited about it. And you have a lot of all moments. (laughs) And, and, and I really like that in these types of games, especially one like this, which is very quick. So I do hope a lot more people get a chance to play cursed court because it deserves it. It's a really good game. Mike, I think it's the cover. I think it's the company because Atlas doesn't make many games like this. So if you've played several Atlas games, you'd be like, yeah, I don't really like their style, which I would get. But I'm with you. This is a really good game. It is. Mm -hmm. All right. My number 92 is the first game from my favorite board game designer, Bruno Catala. I guarantee you will not be the last. First of 30. (laughs) First of possibly uh, 15. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot, probably. Anyway, this is Queen Domino. Queen Domino, the follow-up, slightly gamier version of King Domino. King Domino was a big award winner, but it is a very simple game. It is one that where the replayability is going to taper off very quickly, I would say. And Queen Domino uses the same core idea, this idea of building a kingdom or a queendom in front of you, by playing tile pieces out, matching sides, growing those sections, then scoring for those sections. But now you've got a few other things. 
You've got these towers. You've got the queen piece. You've got these little soldiers. You've got special red single piece tiles that will cover part of your uh, kingdom and give it a special ability. So just a little more. It's still a fairly straightforward game, mm. but uh, I do enjoy it. I, I, I like this kind of growth on the table. You know, I, I've always enjoyed games where you begin with one thing in front of you and you end with a very different sprawling thing. This one does that in a straightforward way. It's not, you know, it's not by any means a, a big thinky game. So Queen Domino, I enjoy it. It's uh, it's one I'd be happy to bring to the table and teach to people because it's so it's so easy to sort of do that, you know. Yeah. So that's my uh, 92, Queen Domino. Fourth year for you, Z. It was 90 last year. So Whoa. pretty close. And I don't look at my old list when I do this. So that's pretty good. pretty good. That makes me happy. All right. The 92 for the people is the... Seventh time it's been on the list, and it, it's been mm. as high as 10. Ooh. So it's slowly fading away, mm -hmm. I think. But it was very popular, and it still is, Star Realms. Wow. I, I know wow. that this is still a quick little deck builder game that it's just so easy to teach people and play. Yeah. And they've tried so many different variations with Hero mm -hmm. Realms and other things. And Star Realms still manages to be, I guess, the OG, right? You know, the first yeah. one there. If ever a case needed to be made that supporting your game keeps it in people's minds, right. mm -hmm. this is it. You know yep. what I mean? This yep. is the kind of game that if they had come out with Star Realms, what, six years ago, maybe more, and that was it, I guarantee you it would not be on this list. Right, right. You just get lost in the shuffle. It's a little card mm -hmm. game, you know? Yep, and right. there's been a billion other deck building games since mm -hmm. then, but... They keep expand, you know. They keep coming out with expansions, right? You know, innovations, they do. Uh, changes. That's how you do it. You keep it yep. fresh, and you keep oh, it there you cheap. Go. Yep. One more yeah, game, folks. Let's do it. All right, my number ninety-one has been on my list here for eight years, although it was as high as number ten, and it's faded out a bit for me just because I don't get to play it as often. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that. I play it several times a year because there's like three expansions that come out and I play them all. Mm. And that's Marvel Legendary. Mm. Um, I like this game. Again, I think it's best with two or three because this game does not know how to scale its difficulty. More players makes it harder. It just oh, does. Oh, for sure. Mm. Okay. They do have pretty much every character in the Marvel Universe in the game, I think, even though they keep announcing a pack, and I'll go, oh, yeah, they don't have these people yet. <laughs> Some of them are in there twice or three times. It's really too big at this point. Just buy a starter set and buy a couple expansions you like, and you'll have enough forever. Jason Brenner, when he worked for Upper Deck, he used to get up and give the number of combinations that you could play with the game. Mm -hmm. And at this point... It's it's ridiculous. There's more combinations sure. than seconds in any human being's life. Um, but I still do like the game. It's fun. I like Marvel. Um, I don't know why it's in the '90s now, but I you know I still like the game. Disappointed. So. Disappointed. You tell. If me. someone's if someone's gonna buy maybe the core set and one expansion, they they haven't played this game yet. What do they start with? I'll say pick a group you like. So if you like Fantastic yeah. Four, get them. Okay. If you like yeah, Guardians yeah, of the yeah, Galaxy, yeah. get that. If you All like right. Spider-Man, well, what were you going to say, Roy? Just Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the only answer. <laughs> only if you like, no, I think that's one of the best yeah, yeah. sets, but you might not like the Guardians of the Galaxy. You might like Spider-Man. Then get that set. Well, then yeah. you should go watch the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and then you'll want, like Guardians of the Galaxy, and then you get the set. I mean, that's the way it is. Okay, so there's a process. There you go. <laughs> Marvel Legendary, my last one on today's list. All right, so my number 91. Um is a game that I just recently got to play this year, but I really enjoyed it, and I played around with it with my kids a bunch too, and that is Starcadia Quest. This is another mm. space-themed game, but wow, you're getting to wow. run around, and there's all these cool different characters that you get to play as, and you're trying to um, take out bad guys and take out the other players to get points. Um, you can do a little bit of campaign-type stuff as you play the game and like upgrade your characters as you go along, but very simple stuff, just dice-chucking, Cool, chibi, miniature fun in a space universe. Um, I really enjoyed the way the game plays. And so that is why Starcadia Quest is my number one. 
or number 91. <laughs> like, wow, we did a big jump right. there. Uh, big jump. Skipping. Roy, 91 you, uh... through 2 are you pointless. <laughs> you have not played Ar- Arcadia Quest, right? No, so this I is actually your still have not played Arcadia Quest, so you won't Got find it. Arcadia Quest yeah, but Mike, he's guaranteed to like it better at space. Oh, no, no, he will. I'm just saying I did, <laughs> he didn't have any background to this. This was his first exposure to this system. Right. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, my uh, final game on the list. Now, I assumed that we were going to have some crossovers throughout the 100, but I didn't think we'd have crossover in our first 10. There's 50 games, Mike. Of course we're going to have a crossover. It's stats. I have a crossover no, with he Mr. means the same chunk. Right. I have a crossover with Mr. Thomas Vassell already. My you number 91. Because he's being rude. Change it. Right. Let I'm me guess. pick one of these games. Uh, uh, Queen Dom. No. Uh, my number 91 is I'm going to call it Dream Factory because that's the version of the Kinesia oh, game that I've that. had. Trom Fabrique, any number of, uh, they're, you know, they're Hollywood blockbuster. You've talked about it, Tom. I don't need to expand anymore, but I do like that closed economy auction like you mentioned. I actually do like the parody, but I'm fine either way. Uh, this is just one of many Kinesia auction games that I think he's he's a master of. Uh, and, and this is certainly one of my favorites. I really, really like Dream Factory, Trom Fabrique. Hollywood blockbuster. Hmm. Ah, I was not expecting that to be the crossover, actually. But cool. yeah. It says Reiner yeah. Knizia on the box. Mike's going to have a there few more go. of those. How many Knizia bidding games are we going to have on this top 100, Mike? There'll, there'll be a couple, fewer than you might think, though. He's going to balance so, out the okay. ones he has on the, his list are going to be the ones that are not on my list. <laughs> Correct. All right, my number uh, 91 is an abstract game called Czar. Uh, that is from the GIF series of games. I'm assuming the spelling is on the screen, so I'm not going to spell it. Um, this one is one of the fastest playing a two-player abstract, you know, head-to-head style games. Many of those games, as the as the match is starting, feel, at least from an outsider's perspective, if you're not a master at the game, like they are ramping up to very tense actions in the game, right? This idea of creeping up on your opponent or setting up some things to eventually have big moves. Czar is one that the first thing it does, as soon as you set it up, like your opponent's first move is opening a shiv and cutting you. And you're like, oh, that's where we're starting. Got it. And we go up from there. The game is short. It'll be like a 25, you know, 30 minute game. So there's that too. It's really punchy. And I enjoy it quite a bit. It's clever. Mecha- mechanically speaking, it's interesting. It's got this push and pull between taking out your opponent's pieces or giving up that turn and making your pieces stronger, more defendable, basically. Uh, it's neat. It's one of my favorites in the series, that that you know collection of abstract games from designer Chris Berm. So there you go. That's my 91. And I think, Tom... Have you played this one by now? Which one is this one? This is Czar. Yeah, I played it with you, I believe. Did I whoop you? Yeah, and it's my <laughs> it's ranked my two thousand three. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think All right. I think see it's my third favorite. I still like Devon and Yinch better. Okay. Okay. But I know well, you, you like this one. This is the sixth year it's been on your list, but it was forty five last year, so you're you hate it now. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I very much dislike it. I, you know, shiving mm-hmm. people tends to do that to me. <laughs> All righty. Last one on this top 10 here is 91 for the people. It's brand new to their list, and it's our second crossover. And my second crossover, they crossed over with me with Maracaibo. Wow. This one people, was definitely. Man. People's voice over there. Oh, my. Ooh. Well, I am. <laughs> you know what? I am keeping track of that. All right, calm yeah. down. No, I'm Who, whoever's to... got the most crossover at the end with the of people. This, we're going to see who's has who's the people's choice because we definitely did not look at the list ahead of time. So no. All right. So anyway, this one was one of the hottest games at Dice Tower West. You remember that we used to, the convention? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember back when we used to have those? Mm-hmm. I think we had two copies of it, and they were just constantly in play. Yes. Um, I know that Alexander Fister is very popular. This may not be the last one of his games you see on this list. But I think this one will stick around for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like it's really, really popular. All righty. Well, that is it, folks, for our first top 10 of our top 100 games of all time. I'll be back 
in 30 minutes doing a live Q&A at noon. And then um, at 2 o'clock, we're going to do our next 10 in this series. But we better get going for now. Thank you to everybody who watched us. Thank you to everybody who thumbed up the video. The more people who thumb yes. up a video, the more Thank you. Uh, traction it gets. And that's sort of, sort of nice. Thank you for all those people who commented. Even if you said our picks were terrible, that's okay. Woo! That's why we do this. <laughs> yes. mm-hmm. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kennedy. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Z Garcia. Have fun eating lunch. <laughs>